Hello everyone, welcome to another Quad Education Test Prep Fundamentals video. My name is Tom and today we're talking about some of the most important vocabulary words for the probability topic. Those vocabulary words, as we'll see, are and and or. So let's take a look. All right, we're talking about and versus or and probability. So first we want to just make sure that we review what we mean when we're talking about probability, specifically with fractions and probability. And it's pretty straightforward, effectively, a fraction and probability is just going to be what we want to happen on the numerator and the total possible outcomes of the set of whatever that situation is in the denominator. So you can think about that like if you wanted to see what the probability of a coin flip landing on heads would be, it would be heads out of the total possible outcomes. This is not an official acronym, this is just something that I use, by the way, TPO. So there is only one side in a coin that says heads that's one and there are two sides to a coin so that's two so the probability that a coin lands on heads is one in two which i think makes pretty intuitive sense and then similarly if we wanted to know the probability that a six-sided die lands on the number three we would say that there's only one side that says three in the whole die and there are six sides to the dice. And so that makes a pretty good amount of sense. Now, what we're going to do today is see what happens when we combine fractions uh, using these words and versus or. So let's take a look at those. And so let's talk about these words and versus or. So a quick disclaimer, the word and you may also see as the word both. And we'll see that in a minute here. But effectively, like with the words and and or, we're thinking about something to the effect of what's the probability of one thing happening and another thing happening? Or something like, What's the probability of one thing happening or another thing happening? And so that's what we mean by and and or in this context, just these two conjunctions used to combine multiple situations. And so here's our first little example. We're going to start with or. So the chances of rolling a two or a three on a six-sided die. And so what we're going to say is, just like with the side lining up with the number three, like it did previously, there's a one in six chance of it rolling a two, and there's also a one in six chance of rolling a three. And you can kind of think to yourself, what's going to happen here? Because we know that it could be either of these. It's, it's, it's going to be two out of six. So there are two options that we want out of the six total possible outcomes. And pretty clearly here, we can see that the operator is going to be at. So the word or in probability always means addition. And we can also, I suppose, just simplify this down to one third. So a third of the time, it's going to be a two or a three when you roll a die. Next, a fun little example that I like to talk about, which is what's the probability that when you flip a coin, it lands on heads or tails? So we just previously noted that there's a one in two chance that a coin lands on heads. And there's also a one in two chance that a coin lands on tails. Then using what we just discovered, this is addition, and that gives us two out of two, which is to say every time you flip a coin, it's either going to be heads or tails. That's the entire probability set. So kind of a silly example, but one that I think does illustrate the idea that or means add. So now let's talk about the word and. And for this example, we're going to use two dice to really illustrate what and can mean. And so this is also what I mentioned about the word both is the same thing as and. So the chances of two dice, when you roll them at the same time, both landing on six, which is to say six and six. So there's a six and then there's another six. And so what we're going to note here is that, you know, when you have two dice, there's there's six things that can happen for each one. And that's to say there's only one six in the first one and one six in the second one. And we could also say that, you know, there could be a five and a six, a four and a six, three, two, one. So there's five other outcomes that we don't worry about or that, that we don't want to um, consider for this situation. And the same is true for the other one. And effectively, of all the options there are, there's six for one. So with the six in position for the second dice, we can say that there is six different positions for the first one, which is to say, you know, if there's one in the six, there can be six options for the other one. And this is very similar to our combinatorics lesson, so I'll give that video a watch uh, if you want a little bit of background on this. And then if we were to say five in the second one, then there's another six here in the first one, which is to say that we really have 36 different outcomes for rolling two dice. And that's to say, we're, we're saying that one is specific and another. So if we have our first die, that's a two. And our second die, that's a three. That's a different outcome than if our first die 
was a three and our second die was a two. These are two different results because they're two different dice. And what we're seeing here is that there's only one situation that we want. It's there's one six and six. There's no other situation where it can be six and six. And we can see pretty clearly here that and means multiply. And so another really important understanding here for vocabulary, again, to review or means add and and means multiply. So now let's take a look at a quick little example here that I'll walk us through. We have a large bag containing a variety of stuffed animals, holds two tigers, three llamas, five bears, three giraffes, and four hippos. If someone draws randomly from the bag without replacement, really important term there, what is the probability that someone draws a tiger and a giraffe? So we see this and word, so we know that it's multiplication, but we have something else going on, which is this without replacement. So that's to say when we pull one animal out of the bag, after that, our number of animals in the bag will be different. It will be one less. And so we see our tiger probability here, which is going to be two out of, let's see how many we have. Two plus three plus five is 10, plus three plus four is 17. And then if once we take out that tiger, so we're assuming that a tiger was drawn, now we have 16 left. And that's to say we have three giraffes. And then you can see here that this is like, you know, by multiplication rules, this is the same thing as three over. 17 times two over 16. So it doesn't matter whether you drew the giraffe or the tiger first, it's the same thing. But what we now have is a situation where we need to simplify this to be, first of all, we can call two over 16, just an eighth. So this is three over 17 times one eighth, which is three over 136. And so this without replacement, with replacement is a really important detail to be aware of as you're doing probability questions because it does make a difference because instead of it being 2 over 17 times 3 over 17, it's 2 over 17 times 3 over 16. Okay, moving on here, we have our practice problems. Two as usual, but we'll do one at a time. Go ahead and try this first one and see how you do. All right, let's take a look. So pretty long problem here. Let's look to the end first, as is practice. What is the probability that Mr. Green will collect homework on both Wednesday and Thursday? So we have an and and both. We know we're multiplying something by something else. Mr. Green has a pair of 14-sided dice die, and I wonder what that would look like, uh, but it has one number between 1 and 14 on each side. On Wednesday and Thursday, Mr. Green rolls the die once. If the side that lands face up is numbered with a prime number, Mr. Green will not will collect homework on that day. If the side that lands face up is not a prime number, he will not collect homework. So what's the probability that he will collect homework on both days? So that's collect and collect. And so very important note here, one is not prime. This is interesting, and they're sure to point this out in the test. One isn't prime because it needs to be divisible by one in itself, and one is only divisible by one. So anyway, we basically want to count from the numbers 1 to 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, and decide how many of those are prime. So 1 is not, 2 is, 3 is, 5 is, so like 1, 2, 3, 4, nope, 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 5, and six. So that's six out of 14. And so there's no replacement here. We're not losing any prime numbers. Six out of 14 on the next day. So what we have there is B, six over 14 squared. Okay, and for my second practice problem here is more pre-response. So see how you do with this one. All right, let's take a look. So a bag contains 20 cards in four colors, red, blue, green, and yellow. There are six red, three blue, four green, and seven yellow. And so that matches up. There's a 10 and there's another 10. You reach into the bag and choose one card at random and then without replacing, so no replacement, the first card, draw another card at random. What's the probability that both of the cards you choose are the same color? So this is really interesting because we have multiple situations here. So we'll basically take one of these at a time. So what's the probability that we choose red twice, basically? So we would say that there are six red out of 20 and We'd say then again, if we did without replacing 5 out of 19. But then the interesting thing is the or part, because we have red, basically red, and red, or blue, and blue, or green and green, or yellow and yellow. And so then we do our addition there, which is going to be the probability of blue, which we're going to say is 3 out of 20, and then another one would be 2 out of 19, and we do another and, and we go 
do our green, which is going to be 4 out of 20, and then 3 out of 19, and then we do our last one, the yellow, which is 7 out of 20, or 6 out of 19. And so this is just a pretty unwieldy fraction, and honestly, usually on tests where you see this kind of question, they're going to have answers where it's unresolved, where this will actually be an answer, and then you know, maybe answer B is going to be 6 over 20 times 5 over 20, where they're not going to do the replacement. And then you have a couple of other garbage answers. So uh, this is effectively the form. I'm not going to resolve this right now because I really more want to demonstrate the concept than you know my ability to be a calculator. But something like this is certainly something you could see on the test because they do in really like to test your ability to combine both or and and statements into probability. Okay, that's it for this video. So probability is a great topic and one of my favorites. And if you want to be successful with probability questions, you really need to know that and means multiply and or means add. If you found this material useful, we hope that you'll like and share the video and subscribe to Quad Education. If you require any sort of tutoring, please reach out to us. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.